Hello little buns, it is Steph. Today I am going to walk you through how I do my daily makeup now and I'm going to compare it to how I did my makeup before I had facial feminization surgery. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, I always start off now with a tinted sunscreen as my primer. I used to use all kinds of actual thick primers because I was wearing a lot more makeup and I figured that the more primer I wore, the better my makeup would stay, which is not always the case. Either way, I like this as a base. And sometimes if I am just running a quick errand, like if I have to run down the street and pick up like a, I don't know, toilet paper or something, listen, everybody poops, it's okay. Then I'll just throw this on and maybe like some sunglasses or a hat and it'll be fine. Since surgery, I've also been doing laser again, <laughs> really, and I have a lot less facial hair than I used to. I still have some, I'm still working on it, it's not perfect, but I've made a lot of progress. So the amount of coverage that I need in certain areas is a lot less than it used to be. That being said, I still use full coverage products because I'm addicted and I can't stop. All right, the absolute first thing I do is I use an orange concealer. This is Smashboxes, which is not cruelty free, unfortunately. I'm looking on finding a replacement. This is the color correcting stick in in dark. So it, it's intended for under eye circles for dark skin, but it works great in anything to counteract blue or purple. So five o'clock shadow, yeah. Perfect. Most of where mine is now is above my upper lip, right here. And I have some kind of in this area too. I'm gonna use it, there's some on the sharpener right now because it gets stuck in there when I sharpen it. So I'm gonna take it right out of the sharpener instead of going with the stick so that I don't use up all of my product and have leftovers and you know. And I'm just applying that directly on areas where I have a blue shadow. This is not something I would do before FFS for some reason. I guess I just figured I didn't need it. I don't really understand why, um, but I mean, I never really had much of a problem with it showing through before, so I guess I didn't, I don't know. I guess now I'm just focused on different parts of my face. And now, if I went right in with foundation, it would blend with the orange and it would turn the foundation in that area kind of orangey. So to avoid that, I'm going to pop some setting powder on top of that area so that the orange is set in place and it's not going to blend with anything else that I put on my face. Now we look like we have a rash. For foundation, I'm using Dermablend right now, and I am using the Smooth Liquid Cover 30W. And I get some on my sponge, and I just dab it on. And uh, now because I'm stippling it, I'm dabbing it on top of the area where we already put that orange, it's not gonna wreck the work we did with that. And you'll notice I'm not putting anything on my forehead because I don't need anything on my forehead. And that's something that it's taken a long time for me to like figure out is that if you don't need to put foundation on a spot, don't do it. My approach to makeup has definitely turned into a less is more, or at least more focused on like treating specific things instead of trying to put on a whole new face. I'm using this amazing concealer right now. It's the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. I am literally on the last bit. It is so close to empty that I have to like forage it out of the lid. I don't really go too far out with this and I try to use as little as possible and then I'll bring it across the nose to brighten that area as well. I love this stuff because it reflects light so well. It's so thick and sticky. I am now setting the under eye area with a translucent powder. Now here's my problem. I went to pick up my translucent powder which is the Dermablend Professional. They were out of the white powder so I thought okay I'll buy this lightly yellowy one, the beigey one, which is intended for darker skin because it can't really be that dark. It's ever so slightly too dark for my under eye area. It doesn't make a huge problem, it just doesn't show the true quality of the concealer. It makes me look a little bit more tired than I really am. So what I've been doing instead, I've been using a really fair matte white eyeshadow instead, and it works fine. It's a little bit different in terms of application. You know, I'm not like baking with it, unfortunately, but it looks fine. And now to set the rest of the face, I've been using Cover Effects. This is the pressed mineral foundation, so it's straight up a foundation powder, but I just, it, I like it. It adds a little bit of extra coverage, and it evens out the tone of areas that maybe are a little bit off tone still. And it just keeps it looking very finished and proper. So I just throw one quick layer on the entire face. Now this is where things really have changed right now. This is where the change really starts. I used to contour every part of my face, my jaw, my cheeks, my nose, even my forehead. I don't touch contour powder anymore at all. Not even a little bit. I did up until very recently still contour my nose, but I stopped that too. And now I just use different varieties of highlighter to catch the light on my face differently. So I've been using the Anastasia Glow Kit. This is my absolute favorite thing. And instead of going with a contour, even a bronzer, I use the super bronzy highlighter here that's intended for darker skin on a blush brush. And I just socket that right into the area where I used to contour. Okay, so like right 
right in there. Bring it forward a little bit, blend around a little bit. And I'm not gonna go crazy with blending yet because there's more things I'm going to apply. So I just basically start that situation. Now the difference between this and a contour powder is this is going to look a lot more natural in different kinds of light and it's gonna look a lot less intense in studio lighting like this. It, it creates less of an illusion of a different shape and it just kind of shows your shape. That's the major difference. That's why I'm doing it now is because I'm not trying to change the shape because I like the shape. And it took me a long, like a few months to really figure that out. It's like, why am I painting a new shape on top of this when I spent money to have this shape and I like it? You know, why am I trying to change it? And you know what I found is I actually feel like I look more pretty with less contour on. And I'm not saying that's like a rule for everybody. I'm not saying you should wear less contour. I'm just saying that I just feel like I look a little bit more feminine if I don't use contour powder. And I just use different, like what I do now basically. Okay, then I use ever so slightly, just a tiny little bit right on my forehead right along the hairline up here. And this is mostly just to make it consistent and then to blend that because it looks kind of ridiculous by itself. That's the extent of contouring that I do anymore. I don't touch contour powder, never again. I'm so happy that I stopped. I don't know what it, it you know what it was? It was my friend Elle actually, turned me on to Anastasia Glow Kit or Anastasia Highlighters in general when I was hanging out with her. We, we, we went to a uh, ClamorCon together in Palm Springs and I don't know, I just, she basically was like, you don't really need to contour, what are you doing? And I was. I was like, well, I want a contour. And then I was like, well, no, I don't. I don't really want a contour. What am I doing? I don't know. So thanks, Elle. God bless ya. Uh, now I'm just throwing on a bit of blush. And I like to apply it kind of on top of my cheekbone instead of like on the apple. Um, and then blend it around, kind of like Lolita style, so that it frames the eye instead of, I don't know, being like a cheek color. That blush, by the way, was California by Benefit, which is a super beautiful pink with a bit of gold to it. Gorgeous. You're gonna rag on my nails. I know you are. I'm waiting for them to all fall off so I can just get manicures, okay? I'm just waiting for them to be done. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Love you so much. Now I go back to the glow kit and I dip my two fingers, actually, into the peachy highlighter and then I go to town. <laughs> so I just shove it everywhere, basically. I don't go right under the eye, but I go right along that cheekbone so you can really catch it. And along the brow bone here. And then for the nose, just one finger of highlighter. Dab it right here. Don't go all the way down. Well, I don't go all the way down. I used to, I used to contour my nose in a way that made it look much longer. And now I just do the little bit right here and then a little bit on the tip. And just focusing on those two areas shortens your nose. It makes it look more buttony. I learned this from Miss Fame actually. It's a really smart trick, it makes perfect sense. Brushing a little bit of my lip, which I also never used to do, because I used to think it made you look like you had a cold, but now I just think it looks cute, so I don't know what that is. Moving on from the actual face to the brows, this has changed a lot too. I used to go in with pencil and shadow and all kinds of shit, and now I brush through the brows, and I mean, I will admit, I'm pretty lucky to have such thick hair on my brows, but all I do anymore is I use that Benefits Gimme Brow as a brow gel, and I just dab a really thick amount onto areas where I'm missing hair, and then I just brush it out a little bit, very gently, so I don't get rid of the, you know, the big dab that I apply. But this is all I use on my brows anymore. That makes a world of difference. This is my favorite brow. Don't you wish that your brows would just, like, mirror image from your favorite brow? Because everybody has a favorite brow. That is a fact. So far, so good. I'm gonna go to the lips now. Uh, what I used to do for lips is I would overline the absolute living shit out of them. It was heinous. It was straight up drag lips. And I mean, I was okay with that. I was living my life. I was doing what I wanted to do and that's okay. But I don't do that anymore. Part of my procedure was I had a lip lift and I don't have much of an upper lip still, but I'm okay with it. Like it's whatever. What I do now instead, I still overline, but very little, very slightly. So I'm using a very kind of nude lip liner. This is Kylie K. I do not recommend it. Oh, Coco K? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was given to me by a friend because it didn't really suit their complexion. This product is garbage. It breaks. It's terrible. The color is cute, and it feels kind of nice on the lip, but the actual, it's garbage. It's terrible. Don't buy it. Don't buy Kylie's Cosmetics. They're awful. They're terrible. If I ever say otherwise, they're paying me a lot of money, okay? So what I do now is I just gently bring the color over my lower lip. I don't like to change the shape of my lower lip. I'm okay with that. And then the upper lip, I don't touch anything except for right above the, where the cupid's bow would be on a normal lip. But I don't have, as you can see, because it's like a ball. Do you see the difference? 
I'm hoping you do. It's not much. And then to top the lips off, I use a plumping gloss. A lot of people think these are a myth. Let me tell you right now, these are not a myth. They do plump your lips if you get the right kind. What these actually do is they bring blood. They basically swell your lips. They bring the blood to the surface of the lip and it fills it up. It makes it look bigger. For an everyday kind of look, I just put on that lip liner and I throw on a gloss on top that plumps it and gives it more volume. Now for eyes, are you guys ready for some hard shit? I go hard, okay? What I do is I curl my lashes, all right? For a good whole, a whole like three seconds. Then I take my mascara, all right? And I apply it. Holy shit, you're gonna lose your mind. And if you watched me, if you've watched me forever, you will be like, Steph, I'm shooketh. What about your signature eyeliner? And I'm gonna do that in this video anyway, but I'm just telling you, I'm feeling the winds of change, all right? And those winds are like, Steph, you know, it's okay to not wear eyeliner sometimes. Okay, so most of the time for a daily look, this is where I would stop anymore nowadays. I used to use so much more makeup because I felt like I had to create these features that I wanted and I did my best. I did my best, but I'm very happy now that I don't have to do that. And I don't want people to misunderstand and think that I got FFS, facial feminization surgery. I got all these things done to my face because I wanted to be pretty. I got them done because I was so uncomfortable every day. And that's why I tried so hard and did all that work to try to create a different shape is because I was, I needed it. I felt like I needed it. So this has definitely improved my mental health. And now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take it to kind of like an edgier kind of evening look, I guess. I don't really do classy evening looks. I just do my like rebel whatever edgy shit. You know what I mean? So all I do for that, I don't even touch my skin. I leave it how it is. So I grab my eyeliner. This is the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Eyeliner Pen. I create my signature eyeliner, which is a double winged cat eye, basically. So I start by going, you know, a little bit at a time to create the actual line on my lid, like so. Do the other side too. Now I do the outer wing. So I just follow the line, the water line. I follow the line that that is making, the angle that it makes at the end of my eye. and then I connect it back to the baseline. Now for the inner winged liner, I follow the line that my eye makes as it comes down on the front. And then just like the back, I connect it back to my eye. I could also stop here, I guess which is still new because even not wearing false lashes is a big step for me. I used to always wear false lashes and I still, if I do this eyeliner, I like to wear false lashes because I feel like it brings it up to another level. Another thing I like to do and what I love, one of these products, this is the Stila Stay All Day, uh, is it Stay All Day? No, sorry, Stila Magnificent Metals. It's like a glittery liquid eyeshadow and I like to just apply that right above the liner on my lid in the first two thirds or so of my eye to create extra dimension and you know more highlight and stuff like that. I used to do full, you know, foreshadow blended eyeshadow looks every time I would wear eyeliner and I just don't feel the need to do that anymore. So one little liquid eyeshadow is more than enough for me anymore. And then lashes, I never really wore crazy lashes, like extreme lashes. These are pretty much as intense as I get anymore. So not, this is, this is not too much, really. I just use the black duo adhesive on the band of the lash. I don't remember what brand these are. I think I got these at a CVS when I was in the States. So applying a lash just, you know, elevates you to another level and I'm still on board with that. Okay, and this is pretty much the extent. Sometimes I'll throw in a little bit more lip color. This is another liquid lipstick from Stila. This is the color Bachi, and uh, I might just dab some on and let it fuse with my other lip color just to make it, give it a little bit more depth. You know what I'm saying? I pretty much never do anything more than this anymore. And that is a big change from before. I'm going to show you a clip from my last makeup video, which was November 2016. And you're gonna be shook at the difference. And it's really, in theory, the same makeup. It's just done so much differently now. And I'm much happier with how it looks now. Um, I don't know. I'm just, there's definitely a difference in how I do my makeup from before and now. It's insane. I don't really know what else to say. So more or less, the main differences are the approach to 
the shape of the face where I used to contour and create new shapes now I'm just throwing glitter on things to make them more obvious like cheekbones or what like my nose or whatever right it's not so much about creating different shapes and now it's about showing the shape that I have and I think that's very symbolic. I love that. I don't know. I'm very happy with how this actually has turned out. And for so many months afterwards, I was still doing my makeup the same way because I thought I had to. I was like, oh, well, it was this habit. I would still bring out, you know, all my contour stuff, but I would do the full shebang. And I, I just never really realized I don't need to do that anymore. And I definitely feel like I look a lot more effortless without all that layering, you know what I mean? And I hope that one day, you know, if you guys are trying to get there, I hope you can get there because it's a great feeling. And I think I would love for everybody to be able to access that kind of makeup feeling, you know what I mean? With all that said and done, if you guys have any questions about the difference between doing makeup before and now, I'm more than happy to answer them. Just let me know in the comments. I will see how many I can get to. If you guys have also had experiences with having, you know, major face surgery done and then your makeup being different after, let me know how it's different because I'd, I'd be interested to know how your experience went. Until next time, just remember you are the artist of your own face. You can do whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy, slap it on. I love you for it. Keep up the good work. I love you so much. Bye!